And just to show you how just a little bit of weight gain can be an issue, for every five kilograms or 11 pounds a person gains, there's a 31% increase in diabetes mellitus, a 14% increase in hypertension, an 8% increase for cardiovascular disease, 6% increase in obesity-related cancer, and a 5% increase in risk of death simply by gaining 11 pounds. That's not a whole lot of weight at this point in time. And so you can see how this obesity, namely as it leads to visceral adipose tissue increase, will lead to these problems and is a, and is a risk factor also if you get COVID to end up with a bad outcome. So why are we having this in our communities? Uh, we in the African-American community, we're not trying to get fat. We're not trying to get obese. Uh, and unfortunately, we don't have all of the tools we need if we're going in that direction to try to mitigate that damage. And one of the reasons why is that it has to do with structural racism that we have in our society. You say, okay, wait a second, Gab. How does obesity have anything to do with racism and structural racism in our community. And the reason why it has something to do with it is that the structural racism that we have in our communities leads to what we call social determinants of health. And the social determinants of health are where we live and how we live and are we able to care for ourselves as best we can in our communities based on the infrastructures that are, that are there. Let me give you a patient example to tell you, tell you what I'm talking about. This will lead into the discussion about why we have such a difficulty in dealing with obesity in our community. I had a new patient referred to me uh, for her HIV about a week ago. And uh, she came in to see me and she came from another clinic and I was going to take over her care. And she was doing very well with her HIV. She was undetectable with her medicines and things. But as I was looking through her profile, uh, she had poorly controlled diabetes mellitus and her hemoglobin A1C was eight. So I said, well, dog, young uh, ma'am, you're doing fantastic with HIV. You're taking your medications, uh, but your diabetes is not under control. And it looks like you've, uh, you're continuing to gain weight, as I see from your old records. And I also see that you were fired from your endocrinologist uh, because he says you weren't doing what he asked you to do. And um, as soon as I said that, she burst into tears. She started crying. And I knew exactly where this was going. And uh, she said, well, why did, why did he fire you? She says, well, my diabetes was never under control when I went there. And I said, well, you take your HIV medicines and you're taking your insulin, but it's not under control. And he says, well, Dr. Gath, one reason why it's not under control is where I live. I live in a place where I'm a single parent. I have well, with two kids. I have two jobs. I don't have a car and I have to ride two buses to work. In my environment, there is no grocery store within 10 miles. There is no place to exercise because there's no gyms within 15 miles, even if I had time to do this. And so if you're asking me to do better with my diet, and I don't have access to a grocery store with fresh groceries, and you're asking me to exercise, and I don't have uh, access to a gym, then I can't do the things that you're asking me to do to be successful in controlling my diabetes and, and losing weight. 